So in a, in a previous interview, you said that Biggie was the best rapper, but Jay-Z was the best MC. Yeah, it's not was. It's Jay-Z is the best MC and Biggie is the best rapper. Biggie's the second best MC, Jay-Z's the second best rapper. That's just my thoughts. And I, and I want to be clear when I say it's my thoughts because every time I say it, somebody has something crazy to say. But that's just my thoughts and I, I don't really care. Well, explain that because a lot of people don't really know the difference between being a rapper and an MC. So from your point of view, explain that statement. Well, a rapper should start out as an MC. And when I say that, it, I mean they should be caring about the things that they're saying. So that means their pen should be flying. It should be going crazy. And that's the most important part of an MC is the things that he's saying. How good are those rhymes? Now, if I have to look at who has the best rhymes, I'm going to say Big has the best rhymes. I mean, Jay has the best rhymes. So as an MC, I'm going to say no one can touch him. Right? If I have to say who has the second best rhymes, if I look at just what he did, let's just say, yeah, everybody's going, yo, he's only done two albums. I'm like, sorry, tell me you had better rhymes than his two albums. Oh, no? Well, then shut up. He's the second best MC I've ever heard. Now, on the rapper side, the rapper is the guy who says those good rhymes the best. That's the reason why Tupac is so high up on the rapper list, but so for me, it's so far down on the MC list. He didn't say amazing rhymes, but he said them amazingly. And he made you believe everything he said. If you can do that, you're an incredible rapper. Like, really? But Biggie, who said their rhymes better than Biggie? Nobody. Nobody. His flows, his cadences, his inflection, his voice, Everything like this guy was so good at rhyming that you, you, you just you could not help but believe everything he said. I heard that Biggie sort of being compared to like you know like a Charlie Parker in the way that he kind of puts together his rhymes in the way that he kind of makes his words jump between the beats and so forth. No one's been able to do it on that level. His, his flow is what takes him to being the best. His flow, I'm telling you, his flows, his cadences, his inflections, his breathing patterns. I'm like, imagine someone that big who has that good of a breathing pattern. Like, it's almost insanity that he could rhyme as good as he could rhyme. Because to be that big, breathing is crazy. And he was, except he rhymes so good that he could say a rhyme that wasn't good and make you believe it was like 10 times better than it was. Like that, come on, man. And then he was witty and slick and, and smart and tricky and his rhymes were dope. But this other guy, his rhymes were just a little bit better. So that's the reason why I got Jay at number one on the MC list and I got Big at number one on the rapper list. Besides Brooklyn's Finest, what do you think are your favorite parts of Reasonable Doubt that you worked on? Funny, um, Brooklyn's Finest wasn't my favorite part on, on Reasonable Doubt. I think my favorite part on Reasonable Doubt was a song that's not on Reasonable Doubt. It's because it's the song that made us make Reasonable Doubt. Um, Gotta Reach the Top. 95 South and Gotta Reach the Top is the reason why there's Reasonable Doubt. Because those songs basically make that album. It makes everybody go, oh yeah, we're gonna make this album. First, we were just doing songs, but when we got to 95 South, it was like, hold up, that's crazy. And then Reach the Top was like, whoa, hold on, we're gonna have to put the, this money up, we're gonna do this studio, we're gonna really make an album. And those two songs didn't get on the album, but they were the reason why you have an album. How many songs from Reasonable Doubt ended up getting scrapped? Uh, like only one. I would say one. And, and, the, and it really didn't get scrapped, it just got lost. At Mastering, we didn't have the dat for a song called Tell Me How It Feels. And because we didn't have it, it didn't get on the album. Great album. I mean, to this day, I still feel that's Jay-Z's best album. It's definitely one of them. 
It's de- if, if it's not the best, it's definitely one of them. I think um, most great artists usually make their best album their first album because they've been making that album for their whole life. I'm, I, I mean, but then Big makes Life After Death and you're just like, all right, cool. All right, all right man, all right. You, you may ready to die. We're all going, yes! And then you, you go on and make Life After Death. Oh, okay, Big, all right, all right. I'm done, I'm done here. Well, you mentioned in a previous interview that Jay-Z had a Tupac diss record that never got released. Yeah, it never got released. No. But he performed it live at the Apollo one day we was doing a show. I heard about that. Yeah. We actually tried to get that footage, but we couldn't, we couldn't get it. Yeah, that was, it was tough. It was tough, like super tough. You have to remember this dude is like really ill lyrically. So then you add the ill lyrically and then he's mad. Yeah, you, you might have a problem. And, I, and, and if you're not as ill lyrically, how are you gonna get back at that guy? It, it, I don't know, man. So you, you produced that record? Oh no, I didn't. No. <laughs> I did. Not because I didn't want to or anything, it's just it didn't happen that way. Okay, so, but you heard the record? Oh yeah, for sure. What was really the reason behind that diss record? Because Pac dissed him. Like, we're over here minding our business. We're over here doing records. And then what, what, why are you throwing me out there? I, we ain't had nothing to do with that. Like, what's wrong? Why, why us? We over here being Rockefeller. All that beef you got, never had Rockefeller involved. But now all of a sudden you want to throw me under the bus? Oh, first of all, I'm not the guy you're going to do that to. The only reason why the record didn't come out is because homie passed away. And what's the craziest part is, is how much respect for him we had. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was an amazing artist. Pac is an amazing artist. And then that happens and we're all like, the fuck is going on here? Like, do you know how much we like him? We used to drive around town listening to if my homies call, like that's one of my favorite records. If my homie call, like how you how you got us driving around, loving your music, and then out of nowhere for no reason, you you say something about us? Like nah, B, we're not we're not gonna stand by and watch it. And like I said, the only reason it didn't come out is because he passed away. But it wasn't like it wasn't gonna get said. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why it got said. And it's funny because before he performed the record, he was like, yo, no disrespect to the dead, but you just can't say whatever to me. Oh, so he actually performed it after Pac passed. Yeah. Yeah, we was at the Apollo. It, w- it was, I will say this. If you can find anybody who was at that show and the Apollo was packed, they will tell you that it was absolutely crazy the things he was saying. I was like, Lord Jesus. Like, when you, you know when you hear something, it's one thing, but then when you hear it performed, it's like, jeez. It was, it, was, it was super tough. 